Uh, today's topic is uh, atom. Now, atom has been studied for a very long time. And the first person who came up with some theory about atom was J.J. Thompson. What he proposed was that an atom consists of a positive charge uniformly distributed among its volume and the electrons are embedded into it like uh, seeds in a watermelon. Nothing more than that. So after <clears throat> J.J. Thompson came Rutherford, who made all his uh, theory based on alpha particles and gold target experiments. He concluded all his findings based on this particular experiment. And what he proposed was that uh, the mass of the atom, mass of atom is concentrated in a small area, in a small volume. and electrons revolve around it. So this was a marked uh, <clears throat> deviation from Thomson, who said, who almost said that uh, the electrons are fixed like seeds in the melon. But Rutherford came a step forward and said, yes, okay. Electrons are not embedded just like that. They revolve around the nucleus. Okay. However, Rutherford experiment failed on following account. First thing is Why atom emit light or only discrete frequencies, discrete frequency or wavelengths? We the same thing. What is said that? <clears throat> When atoms emit light, the spectrum is not continuous. Spectrum is discrete. It jumps from one value to another value and nothing in between those two, two values. And Rutherford, he did not know the concept of electrons being in different levels. Okay. So Neil Bohr proposed modification to Rutherford model. And what he said was that an electron in an atom could revolve 
in certain stable orbit without emission of electromagnetic radiation so <clears throat> he said that yes okay electrons can revolve around atoms in stable orbits without emitting <clears throat> without emission of electromagnetic radiations thereby the electrons can keep on doing revolving in that orbit without losing any energy which was <clears throat> countered by which was which was not explained by rutherford the second thing he proposed was that atoms have certain defined stable states in which it can exist and each state as each state has definite energy what he said was that <clears throat> atoms have got certain defined stable status states whether state 1 state 2 or state 3 whatever it is and each state has a defined energy level so it is not that electron can can revolve in any radius at any radius from the atom core no <clears throat> the electrons would revolve in certain status states and each state would have has a definite energy level okay and the most important of all was he proposed quantum theory what the quantum theory said was that angular momentum of a revolving mag uh, electron which is r cross p is quantized what does it mean is quantized means <clears throat> this value will not be continuously changing rather it jumps from one one value to another value and this we know is mvr and this he defined as n h by e pi so this is the value the quantized value it can be again <clears throat> it can be one times of this value two times of this value three times of this value but nothing in between for example either it can be 2h divided by 2 pi or it can be 3h divided by 2 pi or it can be 4h divided by 2 pi but nothing in between from one value the next value will be this if it is in this state uh, the next value could be this or if it is in this state i mean vice versa these are the states you cannot have angular momentum anywhere between these states states so he introduced an n is the then define the orbit number he defined the concept that electrons revolve around nucleus in orbits of fixed radius okay and for example this is a matter you have electrons going around 
one orbit or it can be going around this orbit or it can be going around in this orbit. This would be orbit number one. This would be orbit number two. This would be <clears throat> orbit number three. And uh, an electrons from a higher orbit can fall to lower energy orbit. And when this happens, uh, radiations are emitted. which is equal to H. So, H nu would be equal to energy contained in ith orbit or initial orbit to final orbit. If the electron is in initial orbit is this thing and it falls to another orbit of this much energy, the difference of energy is emitted in terms of photons and the is greater than the condition is that the level from which it is falling off is at a higher energy level obviously otherwise nothing will happen. So <clears throat> we have few sets of equations which is as per Coulomb's law, the force of attraction this is the proton, charge on proton so this is plus, this is minus the force of Attraction will be Q1 into Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon of R square. This force would make an electron go into a circular path. This is centripetal force. So this would be equation number one. For example, <clears throat> our equation number two is that M MVR, this is the angular momentum is equal to NH by 2 pi. This is as per quantum theory. Then this is equation number two, for example. Now, if you use these equations, then what we get is the velocity of an electron in an nth orbit. This is the orbit number is given as And this is equal to this is in case you have atom other than hydrogen this is for only for hydrogen but in case you you we talk of in general in general uh, if it is not an hydrogen atom then this is the velocity of an electron, velocity of an electron in, an, in its nth orbit is given by this, where this is the number of protons. Similarly, uh, we can get to know the radius, radius of the nth orbit in which the electron is revolving, radius is given as Square 
this is for hydrogen atom. And this boils down to This is this is a generic uh, formula wherein this is applicable for any number of protons, not particular of hydrogen atom. This is for particularly for hydrogen. Now for an hydrogen atom. <coughs> uh, Rather, if we calculate kinetic energy, kinetic energy is mv square by 2 to square of the velocity. Velocity we have already found here. This is a generic formula. Let's use that. That is square by 2 and epsilon by this thing. This becomes this is a generic formula for kinetic energy, wherein <coughs> Z is the number of particles. Similarly, we can find potential energy. Potential energy is given as <clears throat> this is the positive charge, this is the negative charge divided by 4 pi epsilon 1. This we have studied in static electricity. How, how to calculate potential? This is equal to minus of square so I have seen that so square H square Z E square which becomes equal to minus X square this is right here. Two power four m two squares square square. This is the generic formula for potential energy. And if you see <clears throat> these two, they are very much similar to each other except that this is a factor of 1 by 8, this is a factor of 1 by 4, this is plus value, this is minus value. So if we add kinetic energy plus U is total energy, this, will, this becomes minus 1, that's the power 4, This is the total energy possessed by an electron <clears throat> in an atom whose number of protons are Z and which is revolving in an nth orbit. This is the total energy possessed by it. Now we have already found out N. Let's rewrite it again. We found that 
radius of an angle for which is equal to n square, h square, epsilon naught. epsilon n square s square by m by z e square. This now, if we take the case of hydrogen, when we take the case of hydrogen, z is 1. So, and if we talk about uh, the basic status, state, state, basic state, in basic state, n is equal to 1. So what we are left with is h square epsilon naught by m e square. What is this? This is the <clears throat> radius of hydrogen atom, electron revolving in a hydrogen atom in its uh, basic form, basic status. Basic status means the first orbit. So this is radius evolution of an electron in a hydrogen atom because we have taken z as 1 at its ground status, ground state. It's not an excited state, meaning thereby n is equal to 1. For n is equal to 1, we call it as a ground state. So this is the radius of uh, a revolving electron in a hydrogen atom at its ground state. Now this is, has a special meaning, uh, we call it A0 and Bohr called it, this is also called, called Bohr's radius. And value of n a naught, which is called Bohr's radius, is fifty-three into ten to the power or fifty-three picometers. This is a fixed because if you see here, h is fixed, epsilon naught, all items, all components are fixed. Now let's come to, <clears throat> we have defined the uh, status. We have already introduced the concept of N. N is means orbit number. So as you've seen that if this is atom, this is nucleus, electrons could be revolving any or any orbit. This is one, orbit number one, number two, orbit number one, orbit number two, orbit number three, and so, and so on and so forth. We keep increasing up to up to infinity course. So we have seen that the total energy possessed by electron in nth orbit, we call it En is equal to Okay. 
and for hydrogen z is equal to one. Now we take only of talk about uh, hydrogen atom. Then what will happen is that E one, which is the ground uh, status state. This is equal to and we know <clears throat> uh, that uh, En can be expressed as this whole thing, this, this is completely constant divided by n squared. And this comes out to be minus 13.6 electron volt divided by n squared. By this formula, we can find out energy level for any orbit. So if we put n is equal to one, we get the first orbit. And the energy level is this. We go to the second orbit. We get n is equal to 2, 2 square 4, so this will be divided by 4, comes to minus 3.4 electron volt. This gets divided by 9, it makes it minus similarly. Okay. Now, <clears throat> What happens, for example, this energy level is higher than this energy level. And if an electron jumps from this level to this level, what will happen? It will lose energy. And how it will lose energy? It will lose energy in, in form of radiations, which will be equal to. So we can say, if an electron jumps from mth orbit to nth orbit where n is greater than m because as the orbit becomes higher you see the energy becomes more because the negative portion is getting lesser. So this difference of energy while jumping from mth orbit to nth orbit is Release in form of H mu, which is equal to C bar. This is in form of new frequency, and this is in form of lambda. Same thing. So, <clears throat> if we find the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves that is released is. This inverse of the wavelength is given by this equation. Now, <clears throat> this portion is constant. M E epsilon naught, everything is constant. This expression has been converted into a constant for R, which is Weber constant. So our equation becomes simpler. This becomes R z square. Yeah. 
This is your function just you know. Let's do it again. R is equal to ME four, ME four, eight epsilon one square. This is our which bit constant. Uh, there is a small correction. There has to be. Now, uh, we've seen that uh, when an atom shifts from one orbit to another orbit, uh, energy is released. Yes. Electromagnetic variations. <clears throat> and now there is a series of radiations which has released, and we categorize them as follows. When an electron jumps from n is equal to one to this is value of n, this is value of n, two. Second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth up to infinity. This series of radiation is called the NN series. When n is equal to 2, then to 2. This is called. So these are orbits of lower energy. These are orbits of higher energy. If it jumps from lower energy to higher orbit, you require energy. But conversely, if an atom, if an electron jumps from any of these levels to this level, energy is released. And this energy is released in discrete packets, discrete wavelengths. And <clears throat> uh, these are the series uh, which represent the jumping of electron from one level, one set of orbits to one particular set of orbits. So if an electron is jumping to third orbit from this is called if an electron jumps to fourth orbit from this is, is Similarly, if an electron jumps to fifth orbit from the electromagnetic wave was emitted, which is called so these are the <clears throat> this is just a categorization. In case an electron jumps from one set of uh, orbit to another set of orbit. Our next is uh, 
initial potential. We know hydrogen in its uh, ground state has an energy of Now, what if we supply 13.6 electron volt, the total energy becomes positive? Which means the electron is free now free to go away from the atom. Yeah. So, the minimum energy required to ionize an atom is called ionization energy. Why ionization? Because once an electron leaves the atom, it becomes an ion. Obviously, it becomes something positive. So that is why to ionize, to ionize means to remove an electron uh, so that uh, an atom is now no more neutral. It is in an ionic form. It could be positive or negative, but since we are talking about electrons taking going away, the atom will become positive. And it will be a positive ion. To make it positive ion, <clears throat> the energy required is for ionization energy. And similarly, a potential difference through which electrons should be accelerated to acquire this much of energy is called ionization potential. See, we have to supply this much of energy, all right? How, how can you supply this much of energy? This much of energy you can supply by giving V times V. Then this V, this v becomes energy potential. E into V is energy, which is this much. And the voltage through which in next electron has to be accelerated becomes our ionization potential. So for hydrogen atom, ionization energy is 13.6 electron volt and ionization potential is 13.6 volts. Next term is uh, next term excitation potential. What is an exc excitation potential? Is the energy required to take atom from its ground state to an excited state. It's called excitation energy. I mean, we have seen that uh, any atom can have energy level E1, could be at two, E2, E3, and so on and so forth. So if you want to go from any level to any level, or from here to here, some energy will be released. But if you want to do the reverse, if you go from want to go from here to here, or here to here, you have to supply more energy. So for example, this was this is called ground state. 
if from ground state you want to go to second orbit or third orbit ground state to second or third orbit then you require energy right what we call is that at ground state the atom is has been excited to go to a higher level of energy and the energy so required is called excitation potential so for example we know for hydrogen e1 is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts e2 is minus 2.4 electron volts now if the atom wants to change its states from e1 to e2 what is required is it has to have so much of uh, energy because this is a higher energy level than this so the difference of energy would be 10.2 electron volts so if we if you are at this stage you add 10.2 electron volts and you will get down to this level so you would require so much energy to excite original atom at ground state to go to second level of second orbit as we seen before <clears throat> the energy required for an atom hydrogen atom at its ground state to go to some other excited state uh, the energy required is called excitation energy which could be achieved by accelerating an electron through a differential voltage so this energy can be supplied by accelerating an electron through an electron wave in this case this v becomes our excitation potential basically it is uh, it is related to excitation energy 